This presentation is about communicating to people about sustainable development. And, but before we jump into it, I want to take a moment and have us look at not objectifying the people that we're communicating with. I'm coming at this presentation very much from a looking at the value system of the people, of the stakeholders, and it's really important that as part of that lens with which we look at people, that we also acknowledge the beauty and the full depth of who they are. Because it's very easy to drop down into a reductionist image of people when you start applying a value system approach. And that is one of the greatest violations that we can do to another human being. With that intention in mind, I ask you to engage. There are many ways to try and convince people to address sustainability. <laughs> Some of them are more effective than others. And today, we're going to focus on trying to identify one of the more effective means of reaching people at their deepest motivational levels. Now, what's crucial <sighs> is that we keep it within the, fo within the focus of Big Mind. Okay? Because with, with Big Mind, we're able to hold a space that is one with the environment, that is one with ourselves, that is one with all that's arising. Now, let's get down to practice and the basics. Although we can hold Big Mind, if we don't also hold our communications program within a solid framework, it, we're, we're going to fail. So what I'm going to focus on today is a very specific dimension of communicating about social issues. And there are a number of excellent books on the market that help you flesh out the rest of a communications program. I've got all three of these books in the back, in addition to a great one. But these are the components of, of social marketing. What we're doing here is called social marketing. It's called cause marketing. And in our particular domain, we will call it value systems marketing. But it's, it's part of a much larger package. All of these things must be happening in order for the creative effective messages, which is what we're working on, to work. So I want you to keep that in mind. This, what I'm showing you today is not a panacea. If you don't do the legwork, if you don't go out there and create a solid system and follow basic marketing rules, then it's not going to be as effective as it could be. So I want to keep that in context here. Now, let's take a quadratic look at changing behavior. And I'd like to start off by addressing each of the quadrants and looking at what is it that is really required to change behavior in each of the quadrants. So what has to be happening in each of the, a person's quadrants in order for them to actually change behavior? So let's start off with just a few ideas and, and shout them out and I'll repeat them for the camera. What has to be happening in the upper left quadrant in order for someone to change behavior? Openness. Love, dissonance, meditation, increased awareness, confusion, choice, being heard. These are all great answers. Let's get into a little bit more specifics and look at the science that's addressed this already. You guys are hitting on many of the details. First of all, Someone's got to perceive that there's a risk, that there are severe consequences for not changing. There has to be a deep belief that this new behavior is going to address that risk. The person also needs to be able to identify the advantages or benefits of a new behavior and realize that those are going to be greater than the disadvantages of, of the old behavior. 
Now, our little area within all of this that we're going to focus on today is the value system component. They also need to have, they need to intend to perform the behavior, believe that he or she can, has the capacity to perform the behavior, believe it, feel that the change is consistent with his or her self-image. This is called egocentonic where they feel that this is who I am. If I change into this person, this accurately reflects my perspective of who I am in the world. And they need to prioritize the intention to act over all the other intentions that are occurring at the time. So we're inundated with information, desires, ideas, and only 1% of what comes through to behavior is... Uh, only 1% of what we're actually thinking, feeling, intending to do actually ends up in behavior. It's probably less than 1%. I mean, if you think about all the things that are going on with you simultaneously, all the desires that you have over the course of the day, very few of them actually manage to make it over to behavior. So all these things need to be going on in order to, for, for someone to change behavior. Upper right requirements. Someone obviously needs to have the, the physical capacity, be developed enough, have the skills, and the requisite energy and physical health. And then they need to do it. What about lower left? What are some ideas? What needs to be occurring in the lower left in order for someone to actually change behavior? Support? Support? Community? Pressure? Yeah, you guys are right on it. They need to understand. There's, there needs to be a mutual understanding. So you have to have a, a language component. They, they need to perceive the pressure, like you said, Carissa. And if there's a stigma against the old behavior or cultural support for the new behavior, those things are key. And then it helps to identify the new behavior with some sort of social norm, like everybody recycles here. If you're not recycling, it's, you're out of the social norm. Uh, shared values are part of it. And I'm going to actually ask if we can hold questions until the end. Some lower right requirements. There needs to be a, the systems in place to make it easy. And that can range from economic to social to political systems, dynamics that make it easy to act out the new behavior. If there's not recycling bins in the back of the room, it, it's hard to take care of the compost. So let's focus on what we're calling this center of gravity communication. And funnily, what we're doing here is trying to truly meet another human being exactly where they are. And in that space of mutual understanding that Sean elucidated so clearly for us, our intention is to invite them to join with us in affecting change. So center of gravity is, we've got all these different developmental lines that are going on. Maybe there's some little pathologies, things we left behind, and these ideals and hopes. And the, the center of gravity is that, you know, this is generally where we act out of. And you can imagine that, you know, the, these are may, maybe the moral stream and the self stream and the value system stream. And, and uh, who, you know, this, this was my father <laughs> <laughs> pulling me down. Um, now, a key component of doing this work is that it's complex. This is tough. It's like trying to put together a puzzle. I mean, the incredible analysis that, uh, that Will and Gail have done in trying to identify who is this other that's in front of me. It's, it's a giant puzzle. But after much practice and after much work, you can figure it out. Theoretically, you can figure it out easier. And then it requires actually going out there and trying to implement it. Now, I want you all to leave here with the courage to try it. Because a key mantra for marketing is you just got to test, 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 test. You just got to test it and try it. And you're going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And if you make mistakes the first time, <laughs> it's OK. It's OK. You know, it's still going to come together. So a key part of being able to do this 
is what we call green lighting. And the fully integral process of understanding psychophysical patterns and governing sentimentalities always first green lights them, allowing them to be as they are. And this is, a, this is different than allowing. This is different than self-acceptance. This is a Hollywood term for let's go forward, pedal to the metal in deep embrace and allowance of who I am and who you are, and bring that forth, that full expression of, of who I am, and just let it be. Let it be OK. That's a key component of being able to understand other people and yourself, is to green light them for who they are. Green light yourself for who you are. There's going to be some emotions that will come up throughout this presentation. Green light them. You'll green light the judgments. Green light the judgments of the judgments that you'll have. There'll be confusion that'll come up. Green light it. Green light the confusion about the confusion. It's what's arising. It's real. Allow it to be what it is. So I want to touch on some basic ideas. You guys already know this, but let's just do a little bit of review. First of all, we help create the world that we see. We don't fully create the world that we see, but we have a profound influence in it, as Ken points out here in this quotation. That different levels of consciousness actually bring forth different phenomena. They see a different world. So as we're trying to implement an integral marketing program, we've got to always remember that they just, they, we, everyone is seeing the world in a different way. And it's such a challenge to be able to step forward out of that. Don Beck points out that he talks about these marketing mirrors that cause a lot of strategies to fail because people will simply say, well, it sounds good to me. And if it sounds good to me, then it must sound good to them. Our strategy here is that if it sounds good to you, you're probably doing it wrong. And unless you're doing a value system approach, then it's probably not going to be as effective as it can be. So Ken has referred to this many times. It's beyond numbers. It's beyond logic. You have to take both the, you have to take the objective evidence and their subjective stage of development into account. This is a vital, vital component. Because people are seeing and accepting different types of evidence. Spire Dynamics has another way of actionizing this. Is the question is not how do you motivate people, but how do you relate what you are doing to their natural motivational flows? And this ties back to the notion of green lighting. How do we allow people to be this fully expressive, sometimes crazy, sometimes confused, limited, manifest personality, and just go with their natural flows to surf their self. David has pointed out that when it comes down to sustainability issues, you can't just sell green. Because only green likes green. So don't sell green unless you're speaking of green. Ken has pointed out that oftentimes we smother Gaia with too much care and too little discernment. He points out here that you have to sell yellow eco values as a oh by the way, as David pointed out. You don't sell it directly because less than 2% of the population will even want to buy it. There's just no market for it. And that's why we're hurting Gaia. Those who have focused on Gaia's values are actually helping to destroy Gaia. If we can overcome that myth in the environmental movement, we will get much, much more work done. A wise person says, how can I get the greatest common good by working with value structures that people already possess? So the intention here is to be a spiral wizard and address each of the different developmental levels. And we'll go through these with respect to sustainability and tailor our communications to reach people appropriately. We're going to look at best sources for communications. We're going to look at a best fit approach, hot buttons. We're going to look at demotivators, words and phrases that you use that really turn people off. And I'm going to have a plethora of images and quotations and multimedia joy.
This is really vital. I ask that you pay very conscious attention to how you respond to the following images and languaging associated with each value system. Visceral reactions where you, I'm, I'm intentionally trying to stimulate your visceral reactions in this presentation. And where stuff is coming up for you may be an area where you have a charge. It may be an area where you have left some of your development behind. It may be an area where on the ladder of development you've got a little bit down in the bottom, you know. This, this was eighth grade right there. You know, I had a hard time in eighth grade. Okay? And so part of this is becoming able to be aware that these issues are coming up for me. And I want you to use this presentation as a litmus test. What causes a charge in your psycho, emotional, physical self? What pushes your buttons? And there may be real valid reasons for those buttons to be pushed, but there also may be projections, issues, dynamics that are going on within your psychosocial self that are causing limitations in your capacity to effectively reach people who are at that particular level of development. If you freak out to blue images, or green images, or orange images, or red images, I just ask you to look at that. So let's start off with the eco-guardian. Some of the best sources for purple are counsel from revered elders, the caring chieftain or shaman. And again, I want to point out that we're not, talking, we're not classifying people. We're identifying a center of gravity, and this is a fuzzy logic. I like to talk about the dotted line theory where we're putting dotted lines around these different stages of development, not hard classification box schemes where we're pigeonholing people. But it's a generalizing way of addressing and identifying these different dynamics and working with them. So another big source for purple is from within the family, tribe, clan, and insider. So if you really want to reach into the purple, if, if you're a white Westerner, working in Latin America, you're going to have a hard time reaching in, into the purple unless you really get into that family love and bonding. Through signals and omens from the spirit natural realm, through the word of ancestors and their ways, and through the collective sense of supportive peers. Best fit approach for purple. Rites, rituals, ceremonies, icons. Mystical elements, superstitions, magic. Focusing on the extended family harmony, safety, blood bonds, the folk, groups, taboos. As much as possible to utilize familiar metaphors, not inventing new metaphors. Clichés are fine. Drawings, emblems. Key component about purple is that there's not a very deep resonance with written language. And so as a result, it's important to use storytelling, fables instead of facts, emotions, drama, songs, dances. Richly imaginative two-dimensional images. We'll be looking at the aesthetic component later on. But this is not a three-dimensional worldview space. So let's look at some examples of images and quotations. Um, here's an image. It's a focus on, on the children right, living right next to the polluting factory. So let's look at children, for example. Um, there's a whole variety of ways to communicate to children about sustainability. I'm going to touch on some simple ones here. And there are much more complex ways out there. Nike actually has a great program called Air to Earth that gets in and discusses systems and the natural step for kids. And so I'm just going to touch in on little ones, which are, are fairy tales. Now, the Lorax. Love the Lorax. I'm the Lorax. I speak for the trees. Stop cutting down the forest. I'm begging you, please. Lorax rocks. 
my, my wife has been involved in delivering these series of fairy tales to the city of Curitiba, uh, 161 schools. They printed over 2 million copies of these fairy tales and gave every student all, I think, 26 at this point. And it's just been this amazing, amazing process of delivering these fairy tales and beginning to implement them in an effort to plant seeds young. Here's, here's another one of the fairy tales. And, and, and I won't go through it, but basically it's, it's a story about two plants that live out in the desert, and one has a very deep root system, and, and they're, they're near the ocean, and, and, and he, he can't get salt water. So this other one explains to him what, the condensation that happens on a glass of water out in the sun and talks about this sustainable development idea, which is that if you simply run a pipe with water coming into the ocean and out of the ocean, because of the, te the temperature differential, it'll condense. And that condensation is actually sufficient to grow plants on. And there's, for example, they're doing this with asparagus in, in Brazil right now, just planting asparagus along these long, these long pipes where there was no water. So it's cool stuff. Great ways to communicate with children is children to children. Get them to, to work on material that, that is meaningful for them, drawings. <laughs> I love this one. It's, it's from a United Nations Sustainable Development book for children. So this is a tattoo, actually from the Climate Change Center in Northwest Territories that they give for kids that it's a temporary tattoo that'll get a mo it's, you know, they're cool, they have a tattoo and they're supporting the environment. All sorts of creative action is happening out there with regards to how to really support sustainable development. So we're, we're, we're gonna look now at the purple component of the, the Native American uh, culture. Of course, Native American culture is far more than purple. Uh, not in any way are we going to try and reduce it to that. And there is a purple component that can be used effectively to reach people that are deeply resonant with Native American beliefs. And this is, this is showing earth spirits. This is an owl spirit, and this is a water spirit, and this is a buffalo spirit. And this sort of iconography is incredibly useful for reaching into this value system. Here's an ancient Indian proverb. Treat the earth well. It was not given to you by your parents. It was loaned to you by your children. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. Check out the quotation. Gaia needs us. She is calling us, asking us to accept this ministry as our sacred duty. In the spirit of Celtic Druids and the priestess at Delphi of long ago, I invite all initiates, dedicated pagans, deep ecologists, environmental activists, medicine men and women, shamans, earth stewards, and all concerned individuals, whatever your path or name you choose, to hear her voice, to step forward and make magic with Gaia. <laughs> Great chance to feel into your response. If you're laughing, is that coming out of a judgmental space? If you're seeing this as too simple a way to see the world, there's a degree of validity for that for you green light to come up and acknowledge that there may be a judgment there as well, which only hinders your capacity to reach people who authentically come from this value system. So which aspect of nature would, Gaia, would the purple value system be attracted to? Well, maybe awe-inspiring forces, the mystery, the magic, the unpredictable power of forces of nature. Now, there are some cold buttons for purple. If you if you diss the chief, bad news. <laughs> bad news. You're not getting anywhere with your communications program. Okay? Desecrating sacred grounds, bad news. Violating any sort of taboos or ritual ways. So we have to be, do a lot of research to be able to do this well. You've got to know what the taboos and ritual ways are. Any sort of ambiguity, wishy-washy, nope. Isolate and force accelerated change and uncertainty. Boy, is that a tough one to not do in, our, in today's world. Threaten the family, animals and plants included, because they're part of the family. Disrespect elders or ancestors, and don't try to understand. 
that is something which is very honored and valued, is, is at least an attempt to understand. So let's look in the red value system. The eco warrior, I love the terms that Sean has come up for these. And so the eco warrior is, has a number of sources which are most appropriate for it as well. Person with recognized power, straight talking big boss, someone who has something to offer me, someone who is respected, revered, or feared, some sort of celebrated idol, someone with proven trustworthiness. So in working with red, it's critical to demonstrate what's in it for me now, offer some immediate gratification, challenge and appeal to that machismo, the strength that is within all of us. Point out our her heroic status and legendary potential of enacting on this journey with us towards sustainability. It can be flashy, unambiguous, reality-based, and strong. Simple language, fiery images and graphics, as you'll see, appeal to narcissistic tendencies. So, nature, red in tooth and claw. Does anybody know what this animal is? It's, it's called a fisher cat. And they grow to be 30 pounds. They're stocky, strong, aggressive. There's a fisher cat that's been terrorizing a local buffalo farm a couple mountains over from where I live. And it is strong enough to take out buffalo calves. Now, when I moved to Vermont, <laughs> we got three little kittens and mama and started our new home with our four cats. And it was a beautiful thing. And I thought I'd be living out in the country with this sort of naive belief that, that, that everything is going to be peaceful and bucolic and wonderful. And you know what? This guy ate her and him my favorite little kitties. I heard the scream in the night. They, these fisher cats have a scream of, that sounds like a baby crying. It's this intense, intense scream. And, and I knew that that was the night that, that we lost Felix. So this is, the, the metaphor that I want to make here, besides drawing lots of compassion and sympathy and connecting with me, <laughs> um, is that if we go into a communication situation around sustainable development, and there's red there, and we go in with a green value system, we're going to get our butt kicked. We're going to get eaten up. Red is going to run all over you, unless you appeal to red. So let's look at what it means to appeal to red. This is an ad from, from Vogue magazine. Talk about appealing to narcissism. It says, nature, love it while it lasts. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So check in, what are you feeling? What does that bring up for you? Are there judgments? Is that dumb? Is that stupid? Is that pathetic? Um, if it's coming up for you, of course green light it, because that's the only way that you're going to move through it. If you deny and suppress it, you won't move through it. And acknowledge that it's something that keeps you from really reaching someone in red. Are you tired of namby-pamby environmental groups? Are you tired of overpaid corporate environmentalists who suck up to bureaucrats and industry? Have you become disempowered by the reductionist approach of environmental professionals and scientists? Our frontline, direct action approach to protecting wilderness gets results. Earth yeah. first. Yeah. Fiery, fiery language. Red kind of feels like it's about to die. And that's a good way to touch in with red. <laughs> You're about to die. Save the environment. Recycle or die. And, and you know what Red's response to this usually is? <laughs> there are different ways that ex extreme approaches to addressing sustainable development try and take action. This is a San Francisco-based organization, and they go around and put this bumper sticker on SUVs. And this little part up here, they put on a little sticker. It says, global warmer. <laughs> I'm changing the climate. Ask me how. Check out Earth Liberation Front. Earth, every night is Earth night. Look at this torched Hummer. 
torched. The ELF realizes the profit motive caused and reinforced by the capitalist society is destroying all life on this planet. The only way at this point in time to stop that continued destruction of life is to, by any means necessary, take the profit motive out of killing. Yeah! <laughs> it's a force. You combine it with images like this, with the extreme images that we went through, you see how it can motivate people to take action and torch Hummers, to torch lumber yards, to cause a million dollars in damages. Real forces out there, and they can consciously be tapped into. And right now we're going to look at positive ways of addressing the red value system. And one of those ways is to look at heroes within the environmental movement. Check out the Eco Hero Man from New Zealand. Okay? There's lots of different hero programs out there. Action for Nature has one. Leonardo DiCaprio has an eco hero to war. Totally cool, because people really relate to him. Okay, so there are some, some cold buttons for red. Challenge power or courage, any shame or put down, dissing, uninvited, moving onto turf, displaying more powerful weapons. It's one way to turn them off, get them fired up against you. Make gestures, name calling the signs, be derisive, laughing, lose, making someone lose face, taunt them as an outsider. Because remember, with the purple, you're, you've got to be the insider. Um, appear or talk weak, make excuses. Let's look into the blue value system. Eco manager. So the blue value system has a number of best sources. Rightful, proper kind of authority, a higher position in, in the one true way. We talked about this last night at our table in that within the international development movement within the past 20, 30 years, there's been a strong drive to only promote grassroots, bottom-up development which is an incredibly powerful and wonderful thing to do with people. And it is also not aware of developmental dynamics. Because if you're trying to reach someone who, who really appreciates a down the chain of command, tell me what to do to take care of my environment. And you're trying to say, well, you do it. We believe in you. You, you don't need our resources. We're here to hold the space for you. Now, now let's, I mean, re realistically, these programs are very complex and very sophisticated and very intelligent people are designing them. And they're done with, and they're implemented with great, great, great love and, and, and desire to, to really help people. And we feel that they would benefit with a developmental psychology uh, approach as well. So from an integral perspective, there are times when you tell people what to do, and there are times when you do a grassroots program. And, and sometimes you do both. Yeah. According to books, rules, and regulation, person with position, rank, and power, as directed by a divinely ordained power. Let's look at some of the approaches. Duty, honor, country, being a good citizen, self-sacrifice, traditions, laws, and norms, righteousness, sacrificial behavior, Assuaging guilt with its correct consequences. So let's look at some images and quotations. The wicked person who kills animals which are protected has to live in hellfire for the days equal to the number of hairs on the body of that animal. <laughs> this is a Hindu sage and, and lawmaker, and it's, and it's a powerful communication. If you're coming out of that value system, I would be so nice to my cat. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it scraped the hairs off. Um, the, the, uh, um, I'm not going there. The, uh, the, the, the images that, that I found uh, on the websites where I went and looked that were really appealing to 
the blue value system, in my opinion, used very realistic images of nature. As we'll see later on when we look at the aesthetics line, the, the reality here is that um, blue likes nature to be the way it should be. Clean, neat. And that's, and if you're laughing, check it out. Because that's a dynamic that is within us. And if we resist against that, it means that we're only resisting the green lighting of the being that's in front of us. And at the same time, don't resist it. Allow it to come up within yourself because it's, it's part of who we are. So lots of these divine images of nature. Trees are the cathedral of nature. Check out the Boy Scouts. Okay, let's look at the, the, the wording they're used. Boy Scouts of America. Responsibility, values, ethical, respect the rights, respect and reverence. Should all practice, leave no choice. It is our task, our task, in our time and in our generation to hand down undiminished to those who come after us, as was handed down to us by those who went before, the natural wealth and beauty which is ours. Now, a lot of these quotations will appeal to multiple value systems depending upon who's looking at them. And that's the beauty of a nicely crafted communication piece, is that it will reach people where they are and motivate them in the same direction. Let's look at some Judeo-Christian quotations. Pope John Paul and, and ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew I. Par, Bartholomew I has launched a crusade against pollution because he believes that pollution is a sin against creation. And he has 200 million Orthodox Jews who follow his word. This, this, is, this has come out of the Sustainable Washington document. and it's, Now, Sustainable Washington is by no means a blue value system organization. But they're using the application of the golden rule from generation to generation as a way to motivate people within that area to appeal to sustainable development. I saw a lot of these images of space and the blue marble, this sort of inspirational divine. I, I believe that it's a divine perspective on Earth and that it, it's trying to get people to see the world the way God sees it. Nice stuff, though. Even, even the light of God shining down on pollution. Now, this is the 2003 Nobel Prize laureate, Kenyan Deputy Environment Minister, Wangari Mathai. And this is a quotation from a BBC interview. God created the planet from Monday to Friday. On Saturday, he created human beings. The truth of the matter is, if man was created on a Tuesday, he would have been dead on Wednesday. <laughs> because there would, have, there would not have been the essential elements that he needs to survive. <laughs> How cool is that? You see why she motivates huge numbers of people in Kenya around environmental issues. What would Jesus drive? This is great stuff. Check out the, the what would Jesus drive pledge. Okay, we're going to jump down here. Confessing Jesus Christ to be my Savior and Lord, including Lord of my transportation choices. <laughs> Recognition, acknowledgement of what's coming up in you, and it's funny. So this is the pledge. If everybody did this, look how great off we'd be. If my community is pedestrian friendly and has good public transportation, I will choose an apartment home that makes it easy to walk, bike, and use public transportation. If I need a car, my first car will be the most fuel-efficient, least polluting vehicle. I will discuss the ethics of our transportation choices with others. Contact government leaders, increase fuel economy standards, transportation research and development, protection of places like Anwar. I will also contact automobile manufacturers and dealers and let them know my generation wants clean, efficient cars and trucks. I was not allowed to get a What Would Jesus Drive bumper sticker until I signed this pledge online. And that's cool. And I signed it because... Because I am Christ consciousness, in addition to Buddha self. That is part of who I am. Why couldn't I do that? Why can't I deeply feel into that? Again, check out your response to it. It is perfect as it stands. It's flawless without blemish. And there's room for development and growth and improvement. Let's look at Islam's attitude toward natural resources. The Prophet Muhammad, upon him be blessings and peace, is reported to have declared, created beings are the dependents of God, 
and the creature dearest unto God is he who does most good to God's dependence. As defined and clarified in the glorious Quran, a relationship of care and nurture for man's good works are not limited to the benefit of the human species, but rather extend to the benefit of all created beings. And there is a reward in doing good to every living thing. Stewardship. As such, he is only a manager of the earth and not a proprietor, a beneficiary and not a disposer or ordainer. Man has been granted stewardship to manage the earth in accordance with the purposes intended by its creator, to utilize it for his own benefit and the benefit of other created beings. And for the fulfillment of his interests and, and of theirs, he is thus entrusted with its maintenance and care and must use it as a trustee within the limits dictated by this trust. Down here. The right to utilize and harness natural resources, that is a divinely ordained right that you have. You can use them, you have an obligation to conserve them both quantitatively and qualitatively. Man has no right to cause the degradation of the environment and distort its intrinsic suitability for human life and settlement. Nor has he the right to exploit or use natural resources unwisely in such a way as to spoil the food bases and other sources of substance for living beings or expose them to destruction and defilement. This is coming straight out of quotations from, from the Quran and, and from leaders within the Islamic community. Partake of it gladly, so long as you are a benefactor, not a despoiler, a cultivator, not a destroyer. This is beautiful imagery. This is beautiful language. Check out the Australian Labour Party at Sustainable Development Statement, because blue, of course, is not just religion. It's also anything that invokes a higher cause. So labor, big labor, for example, look at the language that they use. Conserve, maintain our natural resource base, responsibility to the future, repair, maintain, and protect it, accountability, responsibility, and transparency. All Australians deserve, now this turns out to be getting into blue-orange, deserve to live in a healthy environment. Should, 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 dogmatic. Our air, our water, our beaches, our wildlife is second to none. Strong ethnocentrism. That works and motivates and is powerful communication and ought to be used by us. We have both the opportunity, orange, and responsibility, blue, for our children and their children, purple. There's lots of literature out there on communicating to the blue value system and especially within the Judeo-Christian arena. So blue, which, which aspect of nature would it be attracted to? I believe an orderly, organized, well-structured components of, of nature. You, know, you, you want to get people motivated about how amazing nature is and they're a blue value system? Point to how orderly and organized it is. Don't point to how complex and interlinked it is because you're only speaking to someone else that isn't there, maybe. Lots of cold buttons, of course. Any sort of attacks, desecration, putting down the one true way, violating the chain of command? Well, that could be. Well, I'll, I'll let you do it. You know, I believe in you. You do it. That could be a violation of the chain of command. Disregarding rules and directives, unfair, sleazy, profanity. Heads up on languaging. And I mean, some, for some of us, it's easy to, to flip off within the right community swear words. But if you're, with, if you're around blue, it's unfortunately only going to block your receptivity. Check out orange. So orange, of course, also has its own set of systems and sources and for reaching out. One's own right thinking mind, mentors and models, credible professionals and gurus, management gurus, prosperous, successful elite contacts, 
Anything which is advantageous to the self-image. Result from one's own observations, tried and true experience, experimentation. And again, we've got tons of quotations that, that you can look through and look for the actual language. And I'll, sh and I'll show a bunch of it here. Best fit approaches. Competitive advantage and leverage. Success motivations, growth, progress, challenge. Bigger, better, newer, faster, more popular. Cite experts and selected authorities. Scientific data. Big god of orange. Scientific data. Okay, we'll see when we get to green. The god of green is environmental catastrophe in a lot of ways. Calculated risk, proven experience, increased profit productivity, better business strategy, the best of several options. Orange likes options. Treated like a, so, so we'll look at how that's used, this best of several options in some examples. Appeal to status, state of the art, fashionable. Show as a way to preempt government I intervention in markets. That Vogue ad that I showed in the red section that was heavily duty narcissism also, of course, appeals to fashionable and status. So these aren't images that I was ne necessarily use in a communications piece, but I think that they're useful to point toward the orange value system. And it's important, of course, to recognize that orange is not just about being motivated about money. It's far, far, far more complex about that. But these are pictures with dollar bills growing on the trees, actually. And, and, and if someone can see through the eye of economics, this is a picture from The Economist, actually, um, then that's a useful way to motivate someone towards sustainable development. David Johnston makes it very, very, very clear that if it doesn't work in the marketplace, you're just kidding yourself. I mean, if you've got a great idea, but if it's just not going to fly and be sold, no go. Let's look at some images and quotations. This is back to the Boy Scouts, Blue Orange. They have an Olympics of conservation. That challenge of winning these awards. This is an Alan Keyes quotation from his 2000 website. And this is a blue-orange example. Check out what he does here. He, he, he goes into the conviction that many of the earth is the Lord's and God's stewards must care for its being. But we should avoid the temptation of assuming that if God wants us to care about something, he must necessarily want us to put that something under government control. Okay, so God wants us to care about it, but that doesn't mean that we're supposed to give it to the government to take care of. And then he goes on and talk about Russia and Europe and how they suffer from some of the world's worst ecological disasters precisely because they suppressed markets and property rights. Under communism, factory managers had no incentives to conserve resources and ordinary people had no legal standing to bring polluters to justice. There's, of course, deep truth in that. And there is, of course, a limited perspective in that. As with everything that I say, and everything that all of us say. Chris Laszlo, of course, son of the famous Erwin Laszlo. This is an orange argument. Social responsibility is becoming an important form of business advantage and therefore a lasting incentive. Beat the regulators to the punch. Change now so government doesn't make you change. This can be a source of competitive advantage, lowering financial risk, encouraging loyalty, serving as a powerful marketing tool in an increasingly competitive marketplace. Some other examples here. Chief executive officers of global Fortune 500 companies predict that environmental and social credibility will have a significant impact on the future reputation and value of multinational corporations. Peter Drucker, famous management consultant, of course, concerned for the ecology, the endangered habitat of the human race, will increasingly have to be built into economic policy. Mikhail Gorbachev, I am in no way suggesting that Mikhail Gorbachev is coming out of an orange value system. He's far, far, far more complex than that. But he does point out that international economic security is inconceivable unless we have disarmament and elimination of the threats to the world's environment. This is powerful languaging. Even Walmart has a way of reaching out to its people from an orange perspective. Hey, it's good for our customers. It's good for us. So some of the images that I found on sites that were motivating what I interpret as the orange value system had to do with challenge. The maze, the hurdles, walking the tightrope of sustainability. These were all sites about motivating business to be sustainable. Thinking out the Rubik's Cube of it. It's awesome stuff. Check out Bill Gates. He says it right here. We can't change the past, but we can change the future as long as we start now. The challenge is daunting, but I am optimistic. President of MIT, furthering technological and economic development in a socially and environmentally responsible manner is not only feasible, it is the great challenge we face as engineers, 
as engineering institutions and as a society. Obviously, as you work in the new engineering program you're developing, an integrally informed approach would draw heavily upon that challenge of science, that we can do it. Because not everybody who enters your program is obviously going to be coming from an integral perspective. Some of the images that I saw in these sites were awesome. This is from the World Council for Sustainable Business. World Business Council for Sustainable Development, rather. And it comes from this whole idea that technology can save us. And I'm not going to get into the whole arguments around sustainable development, but this is a very strong argument. It's called the, the, the strong approach to sustainability. Um, but, but these sort of really sexy images, sexy in, in, in a graphic design perspective, you know, real slick, combining science and nature. I mean, look at these images, risk and the environment, but it's enabled risk, it's contained, it, it, there's, a, there's a luminosity within it. There's a potential for stepping into that risk. HP's advertisement for the World Summit on Sustainable Development, make the connection, make the future. They are not appealing to Buddhist monks in that commercial. This, now, this, this whole imagery comes out of, of man having control over the environment, comes directly out of the Enlightenment. That was, that was the, the foundation of uh, this whole idea that we could get mastery over the environment with progress, scientific progress. We can accomplish everything. And we developed incredible confidence through the entire Industrial Revolution in the West. Unfortunately, in the South, they developed an incredible despair as they were being colonized. And so while we had 300 years of confidence building, they had 300 years of oppression. And that's one of the many, many, many factors that's at play in the North-South differential. So remember this, because we'll get back to when we look at green, because green kind of goes after this progress and, and we have control issue. Also, this sort of just, it's, you know, we're down this controlled path of, of beautifully machined processes towards sustainability. The goal is in sight. This is where we're getting to the aesthetic argument. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Who believes the world is about to come to an end because of smokestack and automobile emissions? That's true. How many people think they're going to die from dirty air? The real popular concern is for environmental aesthetics, not with health risks. You work hard, you deserve a beautiful environment, so you can play hard. So this whole deserve mentality, this whole aesthetics. Let's, let's look at that. Let's take a break from going through these colors and, and look at the aesthetics argument. Because it's ugly in different value systems. There's two different ways I'm, I'm looking at this. This is not anywhere near research theory. It's my own interpretation, and it's an intuition for what I believe is a way to, to motivate people. So as you know with Ken, he's identified the eye of flesh and the eye of mind and the eye of contemplation as the three eyes of knowing. And the eye of flesh is what you see in the physical meat space. The eye of mind is what you see in the mental space, so math and systems and everything that's invisible, but which involves your mind wrapping around it. And the eye of contemplation is, of course, coming out of big mind or whatever your particular contemplative process is. So according to the eye of flesh, this is ugly and this is beautiful. According to the eye of mind, this system is ugly. Pigs, manure, landfill, methane emissions, spent grain, sure, that's okay. The rest of it's ugly though. Fish feed, antibiotics, fish pond, this is an ugly system. Okay, this comes out of the Ziri work, Zero Emissions Research Initiatives, and I took a year long program on this. And this, in the eye, of mind is a beautiful system. You start with the spent grain, that becomes a substrate which you grow mushrooms off of. You can also grow earthworms within it which can feed chickens. Out of the earthworms you can produce enzymes that are, can become natural detergents. You then take the mushrooms that you've cultivated off this spent grain and the wasted substrate of that becomes pig feed. The manure goes into a biodigester. Pull the biodigester gas out of it, use that to, the, to heat the mushroom sterilization process that you need, plus you get supplemental energy for your farm. The digester, then the outflow comes out, goes into fertilizer for an organic garden, but it can also be fed into algae basins where the bacteria and algae combination provides just the right nutritional 
components for, to feed the fish. So you do not have to put any feed into the fish pond. The runoff water uh, also is, becomes fertilizer as well and goes into the garden. And so you end up with all these different value-added products starting with the same spent grain. You get mushrooms, earthworms, chicken, enzymes for detergents, pigs. Plus you get all the energy that you need along the way as opposed to releasing the biogas into the environment. And you get additional gardens, you get fish that you don't have to feed, and algae basins. This is a real system that is operational. There are a number of these around the world. The one that I studied is, is in Fiji. And, and it works. It requires science and attention to detail. Just like we talked in the beginning about the whole marketing approach, you've got to frame it within some of those books that I showed about how to do social marketing well. You can't just put all these together, obviously. It requires orange value systems to get in there and do it well. So this is a beautiful system to the eye of mind. And of course, within the, the eye of contemplation, it's can be all beautiful. The ugly and beautiful of the eye of flesh, the ugly and the beautiful in the eye of mind. It can all arise as it is. So, John Giselle talked about this a little bit yesterday, and he and I have been doing parallel work on this, and I look forward to collaborating with him some more. This, as he pointed out, this is not a developmental line that has been researched and identified, but we both believe that looking at the environment, that you can use this work of Abigail Hewson's work on the development of aesthetics, and she does this specifically for looking at a picture, looking at a piece of art, okay? And she has identified a developmental level. And what I've done, and John is doing similar work, more complex than what I've done, is tied this into looking at the environment. So in accountive, storytelling is works. How I respond to the visual domain of the environment. Concrete observations about the environment woven into a narrative, colored by emotions and drama. What value system does that sound like? Purple. Constructive. First framework for looking at the environment. The world should look the way it's supposed to. What value system does that look like? Blue. Blue. Remember the, the perfect images of nature that we saw? Classifying, categorize, explain, and rationalize the environment using facts and figures. Orange. Right? Orange? Interpretive. Now, I just want to point out that technically in spiral dynamics, orange and blue and green in the terminology only applies to the value system line. So you cannot say orange cognition, you cannot say orange aesthetics or anything like that. You can loose-handedly say it like that. But in any sort of paper in which you're trying to be academically accurate, you cannot say that because it's not true. There are other terms that you use. You use the classifying term if you're talking about the development of aesthetics instead of orange. Interpretive. Seek a personal encounter with the environment using feelings and intuitions to let the meaning emerge. What does that sound like? Sounds an awful lot like green to me. Recreative, seeing the environment with a flexibility and a not knowing, combining personal contemplation with universal concerns. That's pretty complex. What does that sound like? Yeah, something above and beyond green. So, and of course, it's important to remember that someone can be very highly developed aesthetically and not as developed along their morals line or their value system line. So these are not necessarily direct correlations. You don't always get someone who has a blue value system who only responds to the constructive approach. So attracted to which aspect of nature? The orange value system? I think the incredible efficiency, the eco-efficiency. Check out an abalone lacquer. Twice as tough as today's high-tech ceramics and it self-assembles. How efficient is that? We don't need the high pressure intensity that we use to make ceramics today. Totally energy inefficient. Nature does it under normal sea pressure and using seawater and sand. So obviously there's lots of books out there that are specifically geared toward motivating the orange value system to sustainable development. Plenty of cold buttons as well, so heads up on these. Don't, don't you dare put down profit. Don't talk about collectivization. Don't deny me my rewards. Don't force me into some little box. I will not have that. I want the potential to make money. Don't trap me in with rules and procedures. I'm going to change before I have to be regulated. Don't be ordinary or inflexible. Give me a break. And don't treat me as one of the herd.
let's get into green. The green value system, of course, has its own set of sources and approaches that are appropriate to it. And feel into your green. Consensual communitarian norms, enlightened friend, colleague, the outcome of participation sharing, the results of enlightenment, becoming, the here and the now, appeals to affect feelings and emotions on a much more complex level than the, than the deep emotional appeal that we referenced in, in purple, but this comes back in, which is one of the reasons why green and purple get along so well. Best fit approach for green, a sense of belonging, sharing group harmony, an expansion of awareness, understanding of inner self, draw upon symbols of equity. It's interesting to point out that those of you that said that's what's required in the upper left is an expansion of awareness to affect behavior change, you might have been saying that out of a green value system because as we pointed out, there's lots of other things that are required in the upper left. And expansion of awareness can of course be defined in many, many, many different ways according to the value system. Symbols of equity, humanity, and bonding, gentle languaging and nature imagery, trust, passages for growth, real people, authentic emotional displays, participation, community involvement, draw on social responsibility, political correctness, corporate citizenship. This is, this is all tools to use to create valuable communications. Now the whole idea of the triple bottom line is, comes out of the green value system. You don't really figure out how to do it until you get to yellow. But green has this great idea that we can have these three pillars of economic growth, ecological balance, and social progress. That's when this first arises. People profit, people profit, and planet. I think that the green value system is very impressed by the symbiosis, the cooperation, the communication that's that appears in nature. You know, elephants in Africa, for years and years and years, scientists wondered why it was that a herd of elephants would come through and start grazing, and they would just keep going on. I mean, it takes a lot of energy to move an elephant. Why would you just not sit there in this grove of trees and just chow down and just create this path of environmental destruction? So as it turns out, this is current theory, as it turns out that as soon as an elephant starts ripping off branches and chowing down on a tree, there is within 15 minutes, all of the trees within a kilometer of that tree begin emitting a bitter taste. And so it becomes not tasty anymore and the elephant has to move on. And the, the, the theory is that there's a fungi that interconnects them all, and it's actually the fungi that emits it. And that's how it can communicate so fast. Very cool stuff. There's a plethora of literature within the green movement about appealing to this particular area. In fact, this is our buddy, Alan and I know this guy, Jim Merkel. Alan worked with him for a long time, and he's just about half an hour away, a couple mountains over from me. Uh, Dalai Lama, I'm not suggesting that Dalai Lama is coming out of a green value system, but I'm suggesting that he's smart enough to communicate to the value system, of course. Uh, today, more than ever before, life must be characterized by a sense of universal responsibility. Not only nation to nation and human to human, but also human to other forms of life. This is a very debatable quotation and could very easily be interpreted and really appreciated by far beyond the green value system. But I think it also really appeals to the green value system. Here's an ecologist, very deep green. You can see some of the imagery that they're using there. Remember the control picture that we saw in the orange of holding the cloud? Well, this is Green's response to it. This comes off of a United Nations book about, with Olivia Newton-John as the spokesperson, of, of looking about, about how man is just ripping the rainforest out. We have that control, it's in our hands to rip apart the rainforest. Now, green also has a cynical and deconstructionist side that we can appeal to. And when I say we, that this also works with me as well, because I have plenty of green in me. And I, I assume that all of us do. So let's look at it. Kelly Lawson is the culture jam. He, this, this guy's really cool. The, the graphics that they put out from Adbusters are fantastic. Got milk.
Earth provides enough to satisfy every man's need, but not every man's greed. What was that bump? There's also, of course, Green's positive, beautiful side, in addition to this, this cynicism, which can be appealed to as well. The whole issue around being out in nature, being one with nature, sitting around a campfire, these are creating community. This is real stuff, that real imagery that works with people. Boomeritis is, of course, a major issue and is a way to reach people around environmental issues. Um, it is, of course, something that we, it's, it's a dicey issue as, as far as how much do you want to actually reach into this and encourage this. But comments like, our generation will save Gaia, I speak for Gaia, and I know what she needs, those are real arrogant statements. And a lot of people, including myself, believe that. I did in the past, at least. And of course, it's perfect as it stands. Flawless without blemish, and there's always room for improvement. So as we move forward, remember that there are also cold buttons for green. Centralized control, deny any affect of feelings, cold people don't do very well with green, degrade, degrade quality of life, hard facts, just the hard facts, ma'am. Nope. Elitist or exclusive. So what does it mean to, to bring it all together and to actually put this into play? The key is to appeal to the five Ps for multi-developmental level communication. Try it in your statements to, if you are addressing these value systems, go for personal power, principle, profit, people, and planet. See if you can hit all those in, in a multi-developmental level communication. Let me give you a few examples and then we'll, we'll finish up. This is a document which I did for a health food store. And let's just look at these different. 15% off, what does that appeal to? Uh, makes sense, rationality? Blue, orange, yep. For your family? Guaranteed? Safe, blue? Third party certified? Green, orange, like it's safe, maybe blue, because it's safe. Selection? Uh, from bulk to gourmet and local to international. The gourmet part, right, is orange, bulk, is, could be conservative, could be green, local, green, local, blue, international, orange. orange, green, right? So you can drive less and live more. Appealing to your sanity, it's kind of a green thing. Real savings for your wallet, orange. Good for you, good for the community. Good for the planet. Good for our community, actually. Good for you. Good for our community. Good for the planet. Trying to hit, hit a number of the value systems there. Commitment to our community. Resources for living healthier. Resor what does that appeal to? Resources. Orange. Options, exactly. Orange. Let's take a look at another one. This is the back side of that same document. Hand selected the best. 1,600 natural products, right? Hitting orange, big options, hand-selected, quality, blue, natural, green, blue. Discovered natural and vibrant health. Vibrant health, that's a real orange drive. Learn how to feel better right away. Instant gratification. Uh, yeah, also read with that instant gratification, right? Save money now and always. Excite and liberate your taste buds. It's kind of an orange, you know, get me out of this box of this boring conventional food. Freely try anything. Again, that's safety, guarantee, local and global communities. This is a advertisement that I did for um, an evangelical missionary magazine, journal. And so 10,000 tools. Orange, transformational, blue wants to go in there and transform things. Bless, safe, blue, orange, what do you think? Safe, blue, right? Abundant, orange, more food, it's kind of a safety thing. Better health, 
orange. Connection to the world, who wants to be connected? Yeah, and also orange likes to be connected. Um, hope for a better economic future, what do you think? Orange. We donate all profits, who does that appeal to? Green, even blue as well. Lots of experience so you can believe in us. What is that appealing to? Largest, yeah, blue, really experience. Largest selection, orange. Here's this quotation. We use the Sustainable Village Catalog in all of our mission technology training courses. It's the most complete source we've found for renewable energy equipment. And this guy is a trainer for 3,500 new tribes missionaries worldwide. Okay, so boom, trying to get in there as deep as possible. And the last example I'm going to show you before we close up is this piece by this incredible woman. I found this on the internet in March. She's the, uh, the, the European commissioner responsible for the environment. And this was a global warming discussion with corporate executives. I think this is a second tier woman doing a multi-memetic communication. You guys tell me what you think. So she starts off with the fragility of our existence in a poetic term. She starts off with a poem trying to reach into any interiority that may be wanting to come forth there. Kyoto Protocol, efficient and ingenious. What value system? Orange. Yep. Challenge of it? Orange. Orange. Opportunities? Orange. Orange. Peer-reviewed scientific evidence, and they have reached consensus on three major reports so far. Orange. Agricultural losses across Europe were estimated at over $10 billion. Orange. Vulnerable, threatened. What does this get down into? Blue, exactly. Pentagon, new tensions are likely to arise due to the fight for natural resources. Again, pulling on that blue for the US national security. Staggering costs. Orange, right? Maybe even blue, insecure, right? Total insured economic losses are estimated to be in the range of 30 to 40 billion in only 10 years time. It's a threat to the economy. So impressive, impressive communication. I, I've included this on the CD. So, as we finish up here, I want you to work on feeling into the red and the blue and the green. And it's important that you avoid cat parachuting. In the early 1950s, the Dayak people in Borneo suffered from malaria. The World Health Organization had a solution. They sprayed large amounts of DDT to kill the mosquitoes that carried the malaria. The mosquitoes died, the malaria declined, so far so good. But there were side effects. Among the first was that the roofs of people's houses began to fall down on their heads. It seemed that the DDT was killing a parasitic wasp that had previously controlled thatch-eating caterpillars. Worse, the DDT-poisoned insects were eaten by the geckos, which were eaten by the cats. The cats died, the rats flourished, and people were threatened by outbreaks of sylvatic plague and typhus. To cope with these problems, which, had itself, which it had itself created, the World Health Organization was obliged to parachute 14,000 live cats into Borneo. <laughs> okay? So, as, as David talked about, and as Phil talked about, we don't really understand systems. And we can think we're helping, but we're not. So, be careful as you work with this material. And, so you think it's getting worse, but maybe it's getting better too. Because this is a tourist wood carving that's now sold in Indonesia of a parachuting cat. People are making money off of this. You can buy it for $12 on the internet, and I'm gonna buy one. So we're trying to bring together all these nodes of intelligence that exist within the integral sustainability community. And I encourage you to be as in touch with me and the other members of the domain the other directors, David and Cynthia, and as you find cool flash and images and quotations, as you write papers, as you try stuff, let's build a database of best practices. And fundamentally, we are one being stepping forth and creating this new world. Thank you for your time.